Welcome back to JB Reviews. I did some videos testing a lot of gas HDs. Now I did all the testing on the same day and I used my 2024 LAT gas against a Ford 7.3, a Ram 6.4, and another Chevy with the 6.6 LAT with the six speed. And today I'm gonna rank those trucks from fourth place to first place. Let's get into the video. So. I got some zero to 60 testing and MPG runs on all four trucks. So which truck came in last place? Some of you might be offended by this. I know some of you will, but it was hard for me to do this test. Like I really, really like this truck. I really like this truck a lot, but it had to come in last place. Let's take a look at it really quickly. Oh. I know, right? My 2024 came in last place. That was hard to do because I really like this truck, but numbers don't lie. You can't overlook. It finished last place for performance for 0 to 30, 0 to 60 and quarter mile and fuel economy. So it finished last in everything. Now I will be discussing something in a later video. I may have already posted, I'm not really sure yet, but I'll let you know in the video if I did or I'll link it at the end of this one. But some of the highs were the 10 speed stamp of approved Allison is definitely a huge improvement, especially with the shift points. And I do like just how confident the transmission is. And add to that, you can't feel the shifts too. The other thing I liked about the Chevy is it did have the largest standard fuel tank. So obviously it's gonna need it <laughs> because it's the thirstiest one here. But, but it did have the highest standard one. And lastly, there's no cylinder deactivation, none whatsoever, which I like. Now the lows, again, obviously it was slow and GM actually announced this engine for 2020. And they knew that Rams 64, which has been around for a long time, had 410 horsepower. I would have thought that GM might have maybe pushed that number maybe to 415, 420, just to be class leading against Ram for horsepower and torque, but nope, 401. And as I just said, Rams is 410. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the acceleration and I'll show you guys um, the third place truck next. All righty, let's go. Sixty. Quarter mile. These are all the numbers for the 2024. Now let's go ahead and get to the next one. Number three. This is actually probably not a surprise for most of you guys. Second and first place are gonna be a surprise. But this truck finished third for MPG and for performance. So I think 0 to 30 and 0 to 60, this truck was like third place. But the Ram 3500 Hemi is a really great contender despite it having the oldest engine in this segment. I can't remember when the 6.4 Hemi got unveiled. I wanna say it was back in 13 or 14, somewhere in there. This truck has really done well overall. Now, some of the highs is you can get a 410 axle ratio, which standard is a 373, but the eight speed is geared perfectly. That is the 8 HP 75. I rave about that transmission. It's in my wife's Wagoneer. It was in my Ram 1500 I had about three years ago. And what else was it in? I've had, I've had similar transmissions in my Charger Hellcat. It's just a great transmission. It shifts confidently and is a really fast shifting transmission too. And the downshifts are really strong. And lastly, this truck did have some of the strongest off the line performance of most of the trucks in this um, lineup here. So one thing I'll say is that ZF transmission is probably a part of that. And I think it's because of the torque converter. I think that it locks up really good and it just shoots off. So it puts the power down strong, and I think the 410 might have something to do with that too. All right, here we go. Thirty. Sixty. Quarter mile. 
Now some of the lows are, you ready for this? Smallest standard fuel tank. I had the same issue with my Ram. 31 gallons of fuel is terrible. And that's what you get with the Mega Cab and the Crew Cab standard bed. If you get a long bed, you can get an optional 50 gallon tank. And I think that truck comes with a standard 32 gallon fuel tank. But that's just too small too. I mean, 32 gallons, terrible. The next thing, you ready for this? <laughs> this is gonna be funny. Cylinder deactivation. I don't care what anyone says. I used to like this stuff until I figured out that trucks were actually having issues with like oil starvation and what was it, cams were having issues. So this has no place on an HD truck. I know that they wanna make these trucks more fuel efficient, but I think that this segment doesn't really need that. I think just having a more reliable engine is what most guys want. So some people have mixed feelings about cylinder deactivation being an issue with you know, the cams, things like that, but no other HD truck has it except for Ram. They should just cut that. And actually GM cut it off of the half tons on the 5.3 and the 6.2. Lastly, it did have the lowest torque figures of the group, although it did have pretty darn good performance. I think a lot of that was a transmission, like I said earlier. Now these are the numbers for the Ram, and you guys can see the quarter mile stuck out to me, and you guys can pretty much notice that the MPG is about a mile per gallon better for the Ram. Now, this is crazy. My truck took almost a full second to go a mile per hour less than the Ram. So, as I said, this truck is definitely slow. We have two more trucks, two more, and one of them is a Ford. So you know, on JB Reviews, I can never let a Ford come in first place, ever. Now obviously I'm just joking because I like to get under some of you guys' skin. You know, either I have a lot of kids that follow me too, or some of you guys are just very sensitive. I'm gonna say this one last time because I got an email and I, sh I should share it because it's really funny. Someone was really sensitive about something I said about Ford trucks. And yeah, it made me laugh so hard, <laughs> but nevertheless. If you choose to watch the negative videos and not the positive ones, that's on you. I don't think that I'm biased. I didn't build these trucks. I don't get paid any money. I promise you, I get paid zero dollars to buy these trucks or anything. And I could care less, you know, if the manufacturer got mad at me because it's my opinion. And if, if my opinion matters that much, I must be doing something right, right? So again, I'm not being biased. I'm just giving my impressions. So with that being said, the second place truck Believe it or not. And I have to combine second and first place because obviously you will know what truck's first. So with that being said, the Chevy 2500 was actually the lightest truck in the group. Also, it finished first place for fuel economy. However, the Ford did feel the fastest despite the Chevy 2500 beating it to 30 miles an hour. But from there, the Ford pretty much blasted to 60 the quickest and ran through the quarter mile at the fastest time with the highest speed. So here's some of the highs for the Chevy. Let's start off with the shifts. The shifts in the six speed were very, very confident. And something else that I noted was the engine and transmission seemed a little bit better made it together. And I think that it might only be second to Ram's Hemi and ZF, but the shifts were really confident. Feels like the torque converter locks up strong, even unloaded. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, it got the best MPG. Some of the lows, despite it being the lightest, Ford still beat it to 60 miles an hour, and there's no 410 option available. That's the only thing I wish that GM would have did back from 2020 up to 2023, was give that truck a 410 option. Now, as far as the Ford goes, here are the highs. This verse is gonna be funny for some of you guys. So I mentioned that one of the highs was it had port fuel injection. Now, before you guys get up in arms, here's why I like the port fuel injection. Number one, it cleans the intake valves. Like that's one thing I do like. So I do like to run fuel injector cleaner make every thousand miles or so with a gas engine. Like I run it in my wife's car but it's kind of pointless for direct injection. With port fuel injection, you know, the injector sprays the intake valve. So that's gonna clean them. And of course the, the valves are a little bit hotter for port fuel injection. And keep in mind, direct injection makes more power 
and is a little bit more efficient. But as you guys saw in this video, or in the videos that I did, the port fuel injection did good for performance and it did about the best in the group for MPG. Ford does also allow you to get a 430 axe ratio out back as an option. Lastly, it had the second largest fuel tank in this group, which was a 34 gallon fuel tank for the standard bed. And if you get a long bed, it's a 48 gallon standard, which is class leading on that front. But apart from that, some of the lows, you ready for this? I had to go back and watch the video. And I can't remember if I said it or not because I watched it probably about a couple weeks ago. But the 10 speed seemed a little busy um, on one time when I drove it in the past. On this time around, I don't think I've mentioned it in the, in the video. And I don't remember if it was on that trip either, I'll be honest. But I have noted on two trucks on 473 videos that the transmission was a little busy, it kind of gear hunts. It's not like a lot, it's just, it depends on the speed. But with that being said, one of the lows was, the 10 speed is not as refined behind the 7.3 gas engine. And if you compare it to even the six speed behind the LAT, I feel like that transmission seemed a little bit more confident and it just shifted a little bit better overall. Now, this last thing, I know people are gonna, I'm gonna do it, I don't care. So one of the last lows for the Ford was you do need premium for max power. If you read the owner's manual, you don't have to take my word for it. Don't take my word for anything. Read the owner's manual. It does tell you to use premium. You will notice a difference, especially when towing. And listen, the Ford 7.3 has lower compression than the Chevy. That's all I'm gonna say. I know people keep telling me not to run 91, but it also says in the owner's manual, even if you live in higher altitudes, at least with the Ford that is, you're still supposed to run 87 or higher, okay? So that's ending the discussion. And obviously if you're not towing, if you're just cruising around, just run 88. But if you are towing or doing anything extreme, especially in hot, hot weather, run higher octane. So what truck came in second place? All right, so here it is. Drum roll, please. 2022 Chevy Silverado 2500 and first place, the Ford 7.3. So here's why the Ford won. Number one, the performance is fantastic. And even though the Chevy beat it for the MPG, it wasn't by much. It was a small margin. But if I had to choose MPG or performance, I would always choose performance. And that performance is gonna transpire into towing performance too. So I like that fact that you get that extra grunt, especially down low. You also get the option to get the 430 gear. So again, with this truck, you can gear it a little bit lower out back, especially if you live in higher elevations where you're gonna lose some of that horsepower anyways because these are all naturally aspirated uh, gas engines. So the Ford is definitely one of the best in the market. It's overbuilt, Chevy's is too, but I really do like the um, port fuel injection. Like I said earlier, you do get the, you know, that spray on the intake valves, which is gonna clean them. And of course, if you're using fuel injection cleaner, well, it's gonna clean them too. But I hope you guys like the video. You guys can see the chart for all four trucks. I do think that Chevy can really take the crown away from Ford if they do add more horsepower or a high output 6.6 gas engine, even if you have to run premium. I mean, hey, I'm okay with it. For me, I do tow a lot and I probably plan on towing our fifth wheel, maybe not this year, but next year, maybe the Yosemite. And so, it would be nice to have a gas truck that can you know, get the job done for me, but be sure to subscribe to the channel and look forward to some towing videos with the LAT gas with our fifth wheel. So I will be taking it up to some 6% grades. So that content should be getting developed next week. So yeah, hope you guys like the video. See you soon. All right, here we go.
Let's go. 30. 60. 40. Quarter mile. 